this video, I'm going to go over a hand that happened towards the end of a uh, one table sit and go, and I'm going to explain how to analyze the hand using poker stove. Uh, when trying to figure out whether you should move all in or fold pre flop in a small blind versus big blind uh, he heads up situation, uh, the four pieces of information you need are your hole cards, uh, your stack size, which in this case is. Uh, 2225, the blind size, 15300, and your opponent's calling range. Uh, with those four pieces of information, uh, you can figure out the uh, exact equity of pushing all in or folding and uh, determine uh, which is correct. Uh, to start, uh, you have to enter in your opponent's calling range into Poker Stove. Things to remember to keep in mind when thinking about an opponent's calling range are how they've been playing previously uh, and how they will react to how you've been playing previously. Uh, even if they've been playing tight the whole game, but you've pushed the past five hands in a row, they will probably loosen up and call you lighter than they would if you had folded the past five hands in a row. So pay attention to how your opponent plays, but also keep in mind how he might be reacting to the way you're playing. In this in this situation, against this uh, opponent, uh, he was playing fairly uh, weak, tight, passive. So I thought he was calling with around 15% of his range, with the top 15%. Uh, any uh, ace, medium, uh, most low pairs, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so the slider bar down here will let you select a whatever percentage range you want. Uh, the thing of th the way it rakes hands though is probably for 10 player tables. In heads up situations, uh, aces are a lot more valuable than something like jack 10 suited or queen 10 suited. Ace high is a lot more valuable in heads up uh, situations than uh, queen high or, you know, queen jack suited. So you'll want to check a few more of the aces and you'll want to uncheck some of the uh, suited connectors and uh, big suited unconnectors. Uh, but anyway, that, that looks like about his calling range if I had to guess. Uh, this, this doesn't have to be exact as long as uh, you're never going to be exact, you're never going to be as exact, all you have to do is guess closer than your opponent. Uh, so once you enter in his calling range, click apply, click OK, go enter in your two cards, which in this case 10-8 offsuit, and click evaluate, and it'll run the simulations, and against his range, 10-8 uh, offsuit has 33.2% equity about. Uh, so, now that you know uh, what your equity is, uh, you're ready to start doing some math. Uh, the total expected value of pushing all in is the uh, amount whenever he folds, the amount we win when he folds, plus the amount we win when he calls. Note that uh, we won't always, uh, whenever he calls, it won't always be a positive value. Uh, usually when he calls, especially uh, if we're pushing light and he's calling tight, he won't call often, but when he does, he'll have a better hand, so it will probably be a negative value. Uh, the only thing that's important is that he folds often enough that the amount we win when he's folding outweighs the amount he wins when he, he's calling. Uh, so to figure out the amount you win whenever he folds, it's very easy. There's uh, 450 in the blinds, 150 small and 300 big, and uh, you know he's folding 85% of the time. If he's calling with top 15% of his range, he's folding the bottom 85%. So 85% of the time, he's folding, and you're going to win 450 in chips. So 85% of the time, uh, mount when folds will be 85% of the time, you'll win 450 in chips. Uh, the amount you win whenever he calls is a little bit trickier, not much. Uh, to figure that out, you know your equity in the pot is 33.2%. Now you need to know how big the pot is. The total pot will be uh, what
what you have in your stack after posting the small blind, which is in this case 2225, plus your small blind, which is 150, and uh, times 2, since he's going to put in the same amount, uh, y'all both will put in 2375, so the total pot will be uh, 4750 in this case. And your equity in that uh, $4,750 pot is 33.2% about. So 4750 times 33.2 or 0.332 equals 1577. Uh, so amount when he calls, uh, our total equity in the pot will be 33.2% uh, of, uh, what do we say, 4750, which equals 1577. But, since we're putting in 2225 uh, and we're only getting back 1577 out of the pot, we have to subtract the amount we put in. Uh, since we're getting back less than we put in, we find out that this is a negative play. Uh, or, not a, or whenever he calls, it's a negative play. Uh, so, the total amount we lose is going to be 1577 minus 2225, so we have 648 right there, but, or negative 648, I'm sorry, but we know he's only calling 15% of the time. So the total amount we lose by pushing all in, since he only 15% of the time we're going to lose 600, or we're going to lose 648. So 15% of the time we lose 48, uh, which turns out to be about 97 chips, or negative 97 chips, I'm sorry. So when we push all in, on average, by having him call 15% of the time with that range right there, uh, we're losing 97 in chips. However, he's going to fold 85% of the time, so we're going to win 450 chips 85% of the time, which turns out to be 382 chips. So you have the total amount, uh, your, or your total expected value of him calling, and your total expected value of him folding. You add those two together, and you'll get the total expected value of him pushing. Uh, 382 plus negative 97, or minus 97 equals 285. So the uh, expected value of going all in with 10-8 offsuit when he's calling with that range right there uh, is positive 285 chips. Uh, now note this does only work for uh, heads up situations in these sit and goes. If there were three players left, even if the button folded, or if there were especially four players left, if you were on the bubble, even if everyone else folds and it's just you and the big blind, uh, play still changes a little bit. And because in a situation like that, you gain money just by having someone else bust out. So you have to tighten up a little bit. So if a play is just marginally plus expected value, you should probably pass on it. And the closer you are to the bubble, if there's five players left, uh, you don't have to, and it's folded you in the small blind, uh, then it doesn't have to be as positive expected value for you to push in. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, if you have any uh, comments or suggestions, please visit the forums at www.sngrinder.com, and good luck at the tables.